The federal government wants to ban some migrants from settling in Melbourne and restrict them to country towns. It's because of our booming population which has led the Premier to promise hundreds of new kindergartens if Labor wins the November election. These tiny tot doctors check the Premier's heartbeat before his big announcement at their Pakenham kindergarten. Thank you, Doctor. Labor promised $1.68 billion over 10 years to build 785 new kinders and upgrade 200 others. A really big, profound reform in giving every child every chance at the best start in life. The federal government also focused on Victoria's booming population, announcing visa changes will be made to force some migrants out of Melbourne to work in country towns. We're working on measures to have more new arrivals go to the smaller states and to the regions and require them to be there for at least a few years. 75% of Australia's population growth has been in Melbourne, Sydney and South East Queensland. Melbourne's groaning under the weight of 10,000 extra residents every 28 days. Federal Labor left its options open. We're up for examining that. We'd like experts to consider that. The policy sparked a wider public debate on migration and jobs. Way too many people are coming into the country in the first place. It's hard enough for the young locals to get work. But others see the policy as unworkable. What's the point of them coming here? It kind of defeats the purpose. So they will probably go to another country instead. I'm into IT, so I, I would think there aren't jobs in the rural area for people like IT. Well, I'm not about telling people where they should live. To encourage regional growth, opposition leader Matthew Guy says if elected Premier, he'll review country taxes. Is it land tax? Is it property taxes that will need to change? It's what the review will find out. Brendan Donoghue, 7 News. New migrants could be forced to live and work in regional Australia under plans floated by the federal government. But the idea to ease congestion in Melbourne and Sydney has been slammed as a thought bubble by the opposition. Here's political editor Chris Yulman. Choked roads, crowded public transport and sky-high property prices. Stop, stop. These are the constant irritations for those living in the big smoke and cities like Sydney and Melbourne are hitting speed humps as their millions grow. The growing pains from five to eight are the biggest change a city has to go through. It's fuelled by a high immigration rate. Net migration began to rise sharply from 104,000 in 2004 to a peak of 311,000 in 2009, but it has stayed near or over 200,000 ever since. The coalition once promised a big cut. To 170,000 a year within our first term. But it now argues the problem goes beyond raw numbers. We have very rapid growth in our big population centres of Sydney, Melbourne and South East Queensland and yet very small growth in some of the other parts of Australia. So the government has again hinted at a plan to spread the migrant load. We want to provide further incentives and indeed put some conditions upon some new migrants to settle in, into those smaller states and into some of the regions where they need more workers. Scott Morrison once scorned that idea. We simply know through centuries of migration experience that that simply isn't how it happens. The Prime Minister says this new plan is broader. How we align our migration program with the economic and infrastructure policies of towns, regions and states all around the country. For over a hundred years, federal and state governments have hatched plans to spread out Australia's population with little success. The opposition isn't convinced. And he is a Prime Minister that uh, has a thought bubble every day. But Labor also wants to spread the migrant load. Chris Yulman, Nine News.